Welcome back to Box Delights. We're playing some Stratomatic Baseball and learning how to play. We're going to start with the basic game. If you'd seen the previous episode, it's for people who don't know how to play the game of baseball. So I'm just giving you a quick introduction on what the team consists of and what some of the different stats mean. We're going to start with learning the basic game in this episode. Um, when we're using this side of the card, not this side of the card, I showed you a little bit about some of the pitcher stats and the hitter stats. So we learnt how to recognise a, a good pitcher from his ERA, his earned run average, win versus lost, and some of the other stats like how many base on balls and strikeouts this pitcher lets go. And we looked at some of the hitters, the batters stats as well. So we learned about their average and their at-bats, um, RBIs, runs batted in, how many runs this guy batted in this that last season. And that's an important stat when you're looking at picking your order. I tend to look at the on-base percentage for the top of the order, runs batted in for the middle of the order, but also their slugging percentage um, and how many doubles, triples, how many hits they're getting. One couple of stats here we didn't mention was the stolen bases and the court stealing and then these running ratings. So you're looking for A's higher for stealing and the higher the numbers the better here on, on the running. So how fast is this guy? How many bases can he steal? Um, and How many times does he get caught stealing? But I say top of the order you're looking for a good on base percentage followed by some of your big hitters, your sluggers middle of the order you're looking for good RBIs and then everybody else down the end. So we're going to cover off some of the basics here of how to play. We're playing uh, American League rules. We're having Chicago White Sox versus Kansas City Royals. There is this pitch sheet so you can keep track of where all the runners are. So we'll, we'll use that. Why not? We ought to. And with the home team pitching first, we'll place the pitching card here, and we'll start with the top of the order for Chicago White Sox, Adam Eaton. And one of the important things that I wanted to demonstrate in this game, or in this video, was how much interaction there is. Okay, But you're going to want to learn how to, to score a game of baseball. But a lot of the things about Stratomatic is, is it assumes that you already know how to play this game. And this is where I also wanted to do this series, to kind of bring this game and baseball to the wider world where the game isn't so well known. Um, the other thing I would recommend, because you've got limited numbers of these sheets, if you can't get hold of a photocopy, is go and find, there's plenty of... Um, regular ball, baseball score sheets that you can find online. So I'm going to print off and, and use one of those. But, like I showed you in the last episode, you can just use a piece of paper, draw out a grid, and you can start marking uh, on how things are scored. You don't need the mat, all you need is the cards and the dice. Okay, So we're going to start things off by introducing you to how the game plays basically, and how to score the game on a printed score sheet. Here's our scorecards. I've got one for each team, the home team, KC, and the visitor, the White Sox. Okay. I know it says Chicago here, this is the Cubbies ground, but I've only got one board, but you know, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just, uh, just a place to reflect where the runners are. But when you're using a scorecard like this, you don't actually need this because all the information about where the runners are will be on the scorecard. But for the sake of clarity, we're going to use these. So we'll put three for each of the three runners that can be on base. Then we've got one here for recording the number of outs starting at zero. So we bring them out into bat. We've got Shields pitching. We'll run over to the White Sox scorecard. And we can see we've got Eaton at the top batting first. This place here is for their shirt number. I just number them 1 to 9. You can put their real shirt numbers if you wish. There's name. Then we've got their position. So this is the centre fielder. Then we've got uh, Semyon at second base. And I put their fielder rating. And that helps when the other team are at bat. So you can see that 
um, Adam Eaton is a centre fielder two, so there's a number two here. Okay. So Adam's at the plate. What you'll see is if we compare the the batter's card with the pitcher's card, you can see in the top it, they run from one to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to roll the white die first, and the white die will refer to which column, and it, we're going to be looking at depending on the roll. So a four, five, or six will be looking at the pitcher's card. One, two, or three will be looking at the hitter's card. Now. It depends. Normally, there's going to be one of the pitcher's columns which is a little less favourable. So for James Shields, it's a number four. I'm saying that six is a little bit dodgy as well. Um, and also on the hitter's card, there's normally one which is really good. So a two here is pretty good. And then we can see lots of outs in, in different places on one and three. Okay. And this is kind of to reflect the combination of the hitters and pitchers abilities combined. Now what you've got to remember is we're the, we're the manager here. We're not the hitters, we're not the pitchers. We're playing the role of the managers. So it is kind of passive in that effect. You roll the die and the outcome happens. But the manager's sitting here in the dugout making decisions about what plays and giving signals to the guys in the field, to the pitcher, to the guy at bat, via normally the offensive team have uh, hitting coaches here at first base and our kind of running coach at third. They'll be passing signals to each other. And the pitcher and catcher are going to be the most important players on the defending team because they're going to be passing signals to each other about which pitches are going to be thrown. They need a strong understanding. These balls are coming in, you know, you can have a 90 to 100 mile an hour fastball coming in or something a bit slower, something with a lot of curve, a change up, these different types of pitches trying to outfox this hitter. Now that hitter pitcher duel that's not going to be simulated here, okay? It's all about you as the manager making the calls of the play. So what that means is we're not going to have those one, two, three strikes or one to four balls. Instead, with one roll of the die we're going to determine the consequence or the outcome of that at bat. Was he struck out? Did he get a base on balls? Did he get a hit and manage to get on base? But there are still a lot of decisions that you can make, even in the basic game. But let's roll these dice and, and see how the thing plays out. Now you can roll all three together if you wish, but in order to increase the tension or the, the drama, I like to roll the white die first, and then we know which card we're looking at and then roll the hitter's dice in response. So here we've got a 6, 10. So we know we're looking at the pitcher's card. And this is where these numbers come in. Come in okay? So we're in column 6 because of the white die, and we've got a 10. So we're going to look down for this column for the 10. Now if, for example, we rolled a 3 with our red dice, then that will be a walk. Okay, That's when you get a base on balls, and we just move the guy who's at bat up to first base. If we hit the 5, then it will be a home run possibility, and then we would use the split die, and it says on a 1 to 14, it's a home run, on a 15 to 20, it's a double, okay? And then we've got, say, number 4 is a strikeout. But what we got here was a 10. We'll undoubtedly see some of those things as we play on. A 10 says we need to look at the catcher's card, and it's got an X. And this is where we need to test the fielder's ability, the guy who's the catcher. All right, so the pitcher's thrown, it's probably gone into the dirt or perhaps it may have dribbled past. If the catcher's good, then he's going to field that ball okay, throw it over to first base and as this guy's running up here, he's going to get out. Okay, the ball hits the fielder at first base and they have their foot on first base before the batter runs across this, this base. Okay. So as this guy's legging it up here, the catcher's trying to successfully field that ball and toss it over to first. And what we need to do, remember it said, catcher's card X. Every time you see an X, you know we're going to be rolling the split die. And we've got this basic fielding chart. And there's a column for each 
field up. We're testing the field up with these X's. Okay, so there's a table for first, third, and pitcher, one for second, one for shortstop, one for catcher, and one single one for the outfielders, our left, center, and right. So here's our catcher's card. And here we need to check the skill of the Kansas City catcher sitting behind the plate here. Now this is why it's important or helpful to have those ratings written down here. So Perez, I know, is a 1. If we check his card, I can show you this. So um, Perez was down the bottom of the order. Catcher, 1. Okay, so he's a real good catcher. So we're going to be looking in the catcher's card down this first column here. He's got a better chance of being out. So we roll this die. We've got a result of 1 to 20. It's... Um, eight and it reads pop out so what that means is the hitter got a piece of the ball it's hit his bat it's gone up into the air and the catcher has caught it that's an out that's the first out of the game and the first out of the inning remember three outs and the innings over and the way you record this on your chart is you put a one in a circle, the first out. Okay, Adam Eaton is out. That doesn't mean he's out of the game, he can come back in. So you place this card on the bottom of your deck. Okay, that means when you cycle through, Adam Eaton's going to come back up again. So once Danks has had a, a time at bat here down in the ninth position, we go back to the top and Eaton gets another go. And that could be in this inning, it could be in a subsequent inning. For now, Semyon's coming into bat. Now, if you were scoring a real game, then you would put a little bit more detail on this score card as to exactly what happened. So we would call that a fly out. So you put an F here for fly out, and it was to the catcher, and catcher's number two player. Remember our diagram, if you haven't seen the first episode, I was drawing a diamond um, showing, illustrating the strike zone. If we had a player here, it would be kind of from, the, from his numbers on his shirt down to the bottom of the kneecap. Um, and the width of the plate. So in terms of numbering the players on the diamond, you've got the pitcher at number one, the catcher at number two, and then anti-clockwise around the bases, three, four, five, six is shortstop, left field, center field, right field is seven, eight, nine, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And what you would do here is, because it went to the catcher, you would put a two, so a fly out to two, all right? Now we don't need to do that play in this game, because all we want to do here really is record who's where and how many outs we've got and so on. Now if you wish, you can replace these with any tokens that you want to record who's who and who's where. So I've got these little um, sports clicks, baseball figures. I'm going to use them to represent the guys at bat and running the bases. Okay, Semyon's in. Let's roll the dice. The white die first. Is a five, it's off the pitcher's card again. I think that's a good number for James Shields. It's probably going to be an out. And we've got a three. It's another fly ball to the right fielder and it's X. So this time we're testing the arm of the right fielder. Over in right field we have Aoki. He's not so good as, a, as an outfielder. His fielding number is three. So again, we're going to go back to our basic fielding chart. We're looking at the outfield and we're looking in the three column. Let's roll the split die and see what happens. We've got a five, which is going to be... It's an out. And normally that wouldn't be so bad. It's an out, but there's a number next to it. If there was a guy on base, then that number would be relevant. There's nobody on base at the moment, so you just ignore it. It's a... Fly out to right field. So that means we write on our score sheet uh, fly out F to right field. That's number nine. Remember the outfielders are seven, eight, nine. Out number two. Up next is a brave. Let's roll these dice once more. This time it's a one. It's a 7. So let's see, what is that? Well, there's a 1 in 20 chance it's a triple, otherwise it's a single. 
Let's roll our split die, see what we get. It's a 19, it's a single. So Brown's on, we move him over to first base. And to mark this on his chart, we write 1B. He's got one base, that's a single. And then see the diamond, this represents home plate here. So what we do is we darken this line. And this shows us that he's got a single. In fact, I think a lot of people write the, the 1B alongside here to show that's how he got to first base. And this is why you don't really need that, that diamond if you don't want to. You know, you can do this in, sh in small space because everything is stored here on the card. Next up then is the Suedo. And now the defensive team has got a few more options. With two outs, things are a little bit limited for the offensive manager. The reason why is you can't really find a way of sacrificing the guy at bat, you know, making him out, and allowing a runner on base to run. Because as soon as you get that third out, even if somebody on base scores, it doesn't count. Right? The third out just ends the inning. No one can score. So offensively, you've got very few options. In fact, defensively, you've got very few options as well, because all you care about is getting that final out. Now it's risky, but the guy on first here could try and steal second. Okay, what that means is when this pitch is being thrown in, they can get a jump on second base. So irrespective of what happens here, he could be stealing second. But if this guy gets an out, him stealing base doesn't matter anyway. Okay, if he gets caught stealing, then it's a third out and the hitter doesn't get a chance of doing anything. Okay, so it's a, it's a calculated risk. If this guy gets a hit, then this guy's going to advance anyway, right? But here's the benefit. If this guy manages to steal second, and this hitter gets a single, what that means is, although he's up here, because he's already on second base, he has a chance to run over to third. Okay, so that's the advantage of getting this guy up here on third base. So let's see. Is there an opportunity for us to steal second and then advance on third off a hit. And there's three types of singles you'll see on this card. You'll see here we've got a single with an asterisk, a star after it. Here we've got a single with two stars. Now normally, whenever you get a single, there's two situations. If the runner here is on first and you get a single, then this runner is called forced. He advances to second base. Okay. If I got a single and I was here, then again, a single with a single star says all runners advance one base. So there is an advantage to stealing second. A single with two stars means the hitter, I'll put him back here as if he's stolen. A single with two stars, like here, means right, he gets a single, but the runners who are on get two bases, two stars, two bases. Okay, so he would actually go and score from there. Okay, if it was in this situation, then he'd run up to first, and this guy would advance two bases with two stars. There's also a single with no stars. I don't think there's one on this hitter's card. No. But there might be one on the pitcher's card. Yeah, there is. So if we run a four and a seven, there's a single here with no stars at all. What that means is, as usual, runners will always get one base on a single, but there's no two stars, there's not that automatic taking of the second base. But with no stars, you have an opportunity to try and steal that extra base if you can off that, off that single. Okay, With one star, you can't, you just advance one base. With two stars, runners advance two bases. With no stars, then with one base, and then you look at the running ability of the guy who's on base, and you'll run that, roll that 1d20. Okay, and you see this is a 1 to 10 for his running ability. Okay, obviously it will be the, the person who's on base, which is Abreu. Now Abreu, he has a running range of 1 to 11. So on a 1 to 11, if the offensive manager chooses to ask his leading runner to move one extra base off a single with no stars, you roll the dice, and if Abreu gets a 1 to 11, then he would get that extra base. Okay, So already there's options for the manager. Quite a few options. So it does seem, from those first couple of at-bats, 
that you're just rolling the dice and seeing what happens. Once you've got a garm base, then things get a little bit more interactive. Okay. Now the problem for Abreu is he's not very good at stealing. He's got a stealing rating of D. That's pretty low. The reference for you is this basic strategy chart. What you have here is stealing. There we go. So if you're trying to steal second base and you have a rating of D, then again you roll the die. Okay, on a 1 to 9 you're safe, on a 10 to 20 you're out. So it's not too bad, okay, slightly worse than 20, uh, 50 50. But what the defensive team can do is they can hold the runner on. There's a defensive play called infield in, which you can only use when there's a runner on third and there's less than two outs. It's kind of the equivalent of holding the base runners. And when you hold the base runners, it allows the guy at bat to hit safely a little bit more often, but it does reduce the chances of this man on base stealing. And the chances are reduced by the ability of your catcher. So it's if you've got a little chart here, and it says with a, a one rated catcher, it's a minus four, with a catcher rated two, it's minus three, three minus two, catcher rated four or five, it's a minus one modifier. Now we know Perez behind the plate is a good catcher, he's rated one. So that's a minus four. And what that means is for a runner trying to steal second who's rated D, instead of being mi one to nine, minus four says a one to five. Okay, you'll take the number away from this figure here. Nine minus four is five. So only a one to five successfully stolen base. Odds aren't so good there. So Abreu's not going to steal, though he might fancy it if the defensive team chooses not to hold the base runners. Now this is where I might use these cards. Um, the normal position for your infield is infield back. On the reverse of, of this I have infield in. Okay, So I can't have infield in and infield back showing at the same time because of the way I've written the card. But I could have infield back normally and hold base runners. So normally what I do is sit this here like this so there's no dispute over what the defensive team is doing. And normally you would invite the, the defensive team to make their decision before you start rolling the dice and deciding whether you're going to try and steal or not. What are you going to do with your, with your defensive team while well, it's still in field back? But the defensive team has chosen to hold runners on. If we go back to the if we look here, here, there's a ground ball um, if you rolled a 3-9. And normally this would be an out. Okay? ground ball out. Um, this plus plus says if the base runner is being held on or even if your infield is in then this becomes a single instead. In fact it becomes a single star star. All runners advance two bases and he gets up here. So it's up to you as manager what odds are you happy to accept. Right, I don't think the is going to steal. I think they've got a good, relatively good hitter here. Let's see what happens. Now for the offensive team, I've got a similar piece of card. We've got an indicator to show you're stealing. Um, I've got a hit and run and a squeeze play. A hit and run you can only do if you've got no runner on third. A squeeze play, less than two outs with a runner on third. And then you've got a sacrifice. And this is where you sacrifice the man at bat to try and advance your runners. Again, you need less than two outs and no runner on third. It's the equivalent of the squeeze play. So squeeze play and sacrifice are kind of the same thing, with or without a runner on third. Now the hit and run is obviously still an option at this point. And in this event, again, you look at the basic strategy chart for hit and run. Now, it's real simple in the basic game. You roll 2d6, you roll just your two red dice. And we've got a, a double chance, a single chance, a ground out on a 5 or 6, a ground out on an 8. And then there's other other chances like 7. Remember, 7 is the most frequent result of um, 2d6. Batter misses pitch, roll 20 sided die for steal results. What that means is the man on standing on first base has made that jump. He's got to steal first. That's his only option. Um, or try and run back. So you have to try and steal base. 
Now we're still in the top of the order here anyway. Um, we've got our number four man, he's called our cleanup hitter, normally one of the best hitters in your team. So let's just go let's go with the dice. Right, let's roll for the pitch. It's a three, not a good result. And then a ten. It's on the batter's card, three, ten, it's a ground ball, so it's out. But while we're here, let's imagine it's not the second out, okay? It says ground ball went to the pitcher, so the pitcher's picked it up and thrown it over to first and got him out, and it says A. What does that A mean? Because it's an out, it's a ground ground out, okay? So this guy's off running to second, our hitter's running to first, the pitcher's picked up the ball, thrown it over to the first baseman, and he's got his foot on the plate before our hitter got to first base. So it's an out, third out of the inning, that's the inning over. But if we were on one out, and that was then became our second out, what about this runner who was on first? Well, this is where we look at the ground ball. Again, this is the basic um, strategy chart. It says ground ball A, and it tells us the batter's out at first, fine. Um, if no runners are forced, well, we do have a forced. Remember I told you, if you're running to a base where there's already a man on base, that runner is forced to advance. You can't have two people standing on the same base. Okay? If he was over at second, when this guy runs up to first, then he's not forced. So what the ground ball A tells us is, if there's no runner forced, the runners hold. They just stay where they are. Okay? As it is, he's running up to second. They're going to be out. If one or more runners are forced, it tells us that the runner on first is out, okay, and it's called the completion of a double play, and other runners advance one base. A ground ball B is slightly better for the offensive team here because there's no double play. It says, um, again, if no runners are forced, they hold. If one or more runners are forced, the runner on first is out, but the batter is safe. This is what we call a kind of fielder's choice, really. Instead of getting the, run the batter out at first and letting this guy advance to second, what they do is they throw this guy out at second, he's out, and the batter stays on at first. We had a ground ball A, so that would have been a double play. What that means is the guy running up here is thrown out at second, and the second baseman tosses the ball down to the first baseman, and he's out here as well. You've got two runners out and one at bat. Okay? So that's ground balls. Ground balls can be bad. <laughs> um, unless you're trying to, you know, if you've got less than two outs and you're trying to push that a runner on second over, then okay, that's that might be a reasonable play. As it stands, that's our third out. Let's mark that up. That's a ground out. So we put a G to the pitcher. He's playing number one. And that's our third out. So that's a three here. That's the end of the inning. So what you normally do then is put a line like this. So when we come to the second inning, I'm going to start from this point here, okay, with Ramirez. Let's get the uh, infield back, and we've got, so he goes on the bottom here, and we've got the White Sox pitcher, Quintana, coming in, and I'll see these Escobar leading off for the Royals. What we'll do now is we'll finish up the episode by having the bottom of the first innings and that means Kansas City come into play visitors always the top of the inning and the home side is always the bottom of the inning and we'll just play this out and then we'll head into the next episode where we'll learn about the advanced game so Escobar's it back let's throw our dice it's a three it's going to be off Escobar's card let's roll our, our hit it's a nine Three, nine is a strikeout. So for a strikeout, we put a K in this box. That's the first out. Next up is Lorenzo Kane. Let's bring this down here. Let's throw the dice here. Let's throw the pitch. It's a four. It's going to be off the pitcher's card. And oh, we've got some mixed results here. Let's see what we can do. It's a five, 
It's another strikeout. So that's another K here. That's the second out. That's a good start for Quintana. Next up is Moose, Mike Moustakas. Okay, let's throw the pitch. It's a four. So again, it's off the pitches. What we're looking for here is a six will be a walk on eight, nine. Yeah, four, eight or nine for a hit. It's an eight. And we've got a chance at a single, otherwise it's a line out, 15 to 20. Okay, 1 to 14 is a single. Let's roll that split die. It's an 8. Yes, it's a single with a star, and there's no runners on, so that has no effect. Mike Moose makes it over to first base. He's got his first hit. So it's 1B. We darken this line. Hosmer's in next. Mike has got a stealing rating of E, so <laughs> not terribly good. We'll keep the infield back as normal for Chicago. Let's just roll these dice. So it's a two, it's off Hosmer's card. It looks like an out. That's not a good roll for her, Eric. And we rolled a five. That's uh, strikeouts. Okay, so that's the third out and the end of the first inning. So there's no runs, one hit, no errors, one left on base. Exactly the same as Chicago's first inning. All right, we'll head back into the top of the second. Join me next time. Mm -hmm.